All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while. I was in a Muslim country for the past two months almost. So I took a little hiatus. Now we are back and we're going to watch The Great Reset in Islam. When I hear Great Reset, I think about the Great Reset. But let's see if this video talks about the same subject. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Allah tells us, try your best. Make your intentions. Put it in your lifestyle in the lifestyle of our children and our children's children, that when they leave this world, they will leave as Muslims. And no doubt, there is an international movement to take us away from Islam. 100%. To take Islam out of the narrative, so people do not think about Islam. They look at Islam as an ancient religion but nothing to do with the present day world that we are living in. Yeah, yes, that is just an obvious progression, of course, in this liberal world, in this new day and age of progressivism, where everybody follows their own desires, everybody does whatever they want without quote unquote hurting anybody. Of course, there is no place for Islam because Islam will preserve tradition, will preserve family structure, will preserve pure monotheism, will preserve piety, morals, ethics. And of course, none of it has place in this degenerative consumer culture. And we could say that the Muslim world, the ones who are holding Islam in their chests, we are holding this Quran, we are at a crossroad. In one direction is imminent destruction. It is well orchestrated destruction of this ummah in every single level. But on the other road, there is amazing potential. There is great hope for this nation. In terms of the orchestrated destruction, we are witnessing now murder and genocide, man-made expulsion on a level that we have never seen before. Not that it didn't happen, but yeah. we are witnessing it. It happened over and over We are seeing it, hearing again. it. And the situation in Gaza and Philistine is reaching critical proportion. Polio is now in the polluted water. And so we should never forget for a moment what is happening in Gaza, what is happening in Philistine. It is the tip of the spear that is striking into the body of Islam. And we should also not forget that there is an orchestrated plan to develop failed states. That's where you have a state based. with leadership and people, but there is so much confusion that the state cannot do what it's supposed to do. Sure. On this note, I recommend Yuri Bezmenov's speech. This is an interview recorded in 1983. And Yuri Bezmenov, who's a former KGB agent, speaks about subversion of the state. He talks about professional spies, infiltrated movements and ultimately describes how a state is destructed from within with all kinds of supposedly grassroots movement, essentially divide and conquer from within. But guess what? This has been going on since mankind forever. If you look into history, it is always the same tactic, divide and conquer over and over again. And then you have the winners and they write history. It's quite amazing, actually, if you look into people nowadays, <laughs> they don't reflect upon what is happening to their nations. If you look into Europe, for example, right, you look into Germany and what happened after the Second World War, somehow they come to the conclusion that Germany got defeated and at the same time won somehow. So now the Germans that got defeated kept on simply ruling their country. Yes, we made it up. 
But that is all I can say here on YouTube. Ultimately, it boils down to the winners write the history. We look at Syria, the great Syrian people. We look at Libya. We look at Sudan. Yep, Libya especially. If you look, look at the condition in Pakistan itself. Look at what happened to the great Somali people, the great Muslim leaders that came out of East Africa, now trying to spread confusion in Bangladesh. It is an orchestrated plan. It is not by chance. It is by design. <laughs> and we should recognize that Allah did not leave us alone. Yeah, it's very important what he says there. It's not by chance, it is a plan. Duh, obviously. Ultimately, people really have been deluded into believing that they're run by the politicians that they voted, and somehow those politicians are incompetent. They simply do not know any better. Huh, just a bunch of idiots. They don't know how to run a country. This is, of course, absolutely ridiculous. If you know anything about history, about geopolitics, just a little bit is already enough to understand that it's all planned. The guys behind the politicians that are using the politicians as puppets, ultimately, play the chess. And the peasants, the regular population, the peasantry, doesn't understand what is going on. That along with this apparent destruction, there is great potential. We are growing and growing and growing. All of our masjids, all of our communities, we are expanding even here to the point where this space cannot hold us anymore. We have over 26% of the Earth's population. We have some of the richest families on Earth. Our countries lie in strategic positions. Sure. That's all true. Our age, we are mostly young people. 60% of Muslims are under 30 years old. Our, our sources, the Quran, the Sunnah, we still have it in authentic form. No other religion has something like this. Okay, and so the great right. potential is there. We are at a crossroads. Allah revealed to us in his book as we cry for this change. Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change that which is in themselves. Yep. An internal change has to come about. The very concept that we have. Yes, and this is why the Quran is so powerful after all. This saying ultimately has been reused oftentimes. Nowadays you see slogans, motivational slogans, be the change you want to see. But ultimately it really boils down to the inner world. The inner world has to be changed. The attitude towards life has to be changed. Your internal universe has to be changed before you can change anything in the world. And therefore, if you're just a passive bystander, many people blame certain leaders of the Arab world, for example. Oh, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't he do that? But ultimately, the question becomes, what are you doing? Right? In 99.9% .9 of the cases, people are passive, people are docile, they're not doing anything. And because they are in that state, they want to see the change happening for them. But the change cannot happen if you do not change. We need a great reset. Reset oh, okay. ourselves. I thought the video the was about the great being reset. Muslim is being Klaus. Muslim just that we will we will drink uh, our tea and we will have halal food? Is it being Muslim that we will wear a topia, we will wear certain clothes? What is it? A great reset is needed. So the masses of people that we have will change from being Ruta a sail foam on the water great in number but no roots to a dynamic ummah how can we come about we need some practical suggestions and i want to present to you on our level we are not politicians we are not controlling countries but we can control ourselves 
And you will see that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, they were not large in number. They did not have weapons of mass destruction. They did not have mass communications, no, they were but they changed as well. the world. The Great Reset. Number one. Okay, I don't like that he used to this seek term, but well. Nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure, first and foremost. That we need to be sincere to Allah before we are sincere to our ideology, to our leaders, to our ethnic group. Every individual, the basis of why we do things should be to please Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes. Yeah, I love what he mentions there because ultimately this is what Islam is. It is not the allegiance to a specific nationalistic movement, a certain flag or whatnot. It is between you and the creator and therefore the main priority, as he said already here, should be of course the submission to God. That is the first step that you have to take. The question that you have to ask yourself is, are you truly submitted to God? Do you follow your desires, even to a small extent? Do you follow certain leaders? Do you listen to people that you shouldn't listen to? Etc. Etc. You name it, the basics. So the first step is obviously look inwards, see where you went wrong, repent to God. One of the great scholars of Islam, Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, in his last uh, advice, he talked about a mental disease. It is called Hizbiya. Hizbiya. A Hizb is a group. Organizational fanaticism. He said, beware of organizational fanaticism. That we could have a mass of Muslims, but if we are organizations fight, fighting against each other, not respecting each other, then we are a group of weak people and no longer an ummah. Organizations yeah, sure. are necessary, but the organization is part of the body of Islam, like the hand and the head More like and the, the head. leg. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. The organization becomes the head of the body, of course, and therefore if you have a diseased organization, obviously that will poison the body if the whole body is following a mentally ill head, so to speak, you go into the wrong direction. If the head thinks it's the only part of the body, then it's useless. If the foot thinks that it is the only part of the body, it is useless. But when it all comes together, there is a human being. Number two, in the great reset, we need to return to authentic sources to learn Arabic as much as we can, to go to authentic sources as the basis of our faith. The Prophet ﷺ said very clearly, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْمَحَجَّةِ الْبَيْدَاءِ لَيْلُهَا كَنَّهَارِهَا لَا يَزِيغُ بَعْدِ عَنْهَا إِلَّا هَلِكْ I have left you on a clear path. Its night is like its day. And the only one who will go away from this path is the one who is about to be destroyed. It is clear. And with the death of the Prophet ﷺ and the Quran being complete, Allah completed the religion. But today, within our Ummah, there are Muslims who are doing strange things and so we need to return to the authentic sources but it needs to have inclusion all of the great imams not one imam over another imam one school of thought over another all of us together as a jamaah number three we need to focus on character not just rituals. For Ahlaq. a long time we focused on ibadat, the rituals of Islam, and this is important. Your basis of your faith is your worship. But your ibadah is supposed to lead you to something. Salat is supposed to make you a person of salat. 
Allah told us, Inna salata tanha anil fasha'i wal munka. Prayer will prohibit you from evil and corruption. Fasting is not just to starve your body. Allah said, La'allakum tattaqoon. Fasting is to gain taqwa. It's to gain the consciousness of Allah. Yep, God consciousness. Character. I'm a Muslim. What does it mean? I drink my coffee. I drink my tea. I have my special halal food. I make prayer and then I tell a lie. That's not a Muslim. It's the complete character. The Prophet ﷺ said very clearly in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, akhlaq. Verily, I have been sent in order to complete the best in character. That's the reason why he was sent. Yep. So in the Great Reset, our children need to focus on character. Yeah, this is enormously important, of course. I spoke about this previously. Habib said it the best. He said that regular, average, non-Muslims, they're not reading the Quran, they're not reading Hadith, they are reading Muslims, which means the way that a Muslim behaves, this is the way that he represents Islam. Every single time that you might think that you're not in representation, you're absolutely wrong. You're always representing. I remember my father back in the day when I used to bodybuild and I became a bodybuilder. I was jacked, right? But I had a very mean attitude about me during my younger years. I was so focused on building muscle that I stopped socializing. And then my father said, hey, listen, man, you are now representing the sport. And because you are representing the sport, you have to smile. So people see you as a representative of bodybuilding and they see it as something positive. And this is just bodybuilding. Now we're talking about Islam. You are a representative of the deen. It doesn't matter if you're giving dawah, if you're a scholar or not. Simply by existing the way that you are. People know that you are Muslim. The way that you will behave with them. This is the indirect dawah that you are then giving. There is nothing more important. And moreover, to look at it from a spiritual angle, the mannerism, the beauty of your character. This is, of course, a beautification in front of Allah. This is what we're supposed to do, of course. God created all of us. He created us as his creations. And now if we don't behave the way that God intended, we're going exactly against him. Being a Muslim means how we interact with each other how we interact with society. Number four, building and protecting healthy, empowered families. Yeah. Our focus it's needs to be ultra. on families with an emphasis on the women of Islam. If the women of Islam are strong, if our families are strong, then the basis of the structure is sound if we're weak if the women of islam are weak and they spend their time fighting against their husband then we become useless healthy empowered families that means the food that we eat can be halal but it needs to be halal and tayyiba it needs to be permissible but nourishing food Yes, it finally somebody says it. Number man. five. I made at least two videos on this topic speaking about so-called halal food. I really don't care that it's labeled halal. What does that mean? Fried chicken, chips, ramen noodle soups and whatnot. All kinds of junk food is labeled halal. There was no such thing during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This all comes with the Industrial Revolution. All of it is absolute crap that you shouldn't put into your body. You have no idea how many obese Muslims I have seen, diabetics and what not. Why? Because they're eating the wrong foods. And therefore, honestly, I find it disgraceful to even put the halal label onto those foods. Yeah, alcohol-free beer is halal, technically. You can put on the label. Chips, junk food, etc., as I named. But it's not meant for the human body. 
Those are man-made industries that produce a product that they want to sell you. They're manufacturing it in a way that is highly addictive. They make it highly addictive. They have teams for this, right? They're coming up with new recipes, with new tinctures that they put onto their chips. And now you as the consumer can eat that end product. It's absolutely repulsive. It doesn't deserve the halal label. And if you feed such crap food to your family, you will destroy them biochemically. Then they might get depressed and what not. It is an absolute outrage. Please look into nutrition. It is so simple. Simply return first to single ingredient foods. If you want to eat carbohydrates, okay, eat rice, a potato, combine that with meat, eat a steak, Keep it as rare as possible. And then you go from there. Keep on learning. But don't buy those packaged quote-unquote foods. Nothing really halal about this. A special emphasis on the youth, on sure. young people. The majority of Muslims right now are young people. What are the programs that we have for young people? Are we taking the advice from young people? Are they involved? They will be the leaders of the future. They are the strength of this ummah. And so Children our emphasis the in the reset. Yes, but he's absolutely correct here as well. Again, because ultimately what you see is, of course, the brainwashing of the children. Ultimately, everything in life is manipulation. Obviously, children are manipulated in the school system to become good workers, to become the peasantry yet again. And, of course, they're brainwashing them with certain political ideas, certain political agendas. So ultimately, you as a parent have to manipulate and brainwash your children as well. However, for a positive cause. You are in complete control over your children. Let nobody tell you otherwise. Especially the first four years, you have to spend as much time as possible with them and infuse them with your ideas. And this is honestly why you should have children, of course. Because you are reproducing. You are replicating yourself. So what is the use if you replicated yourself genetically and now those children live on with a different software, so to speak. Somebody else put something in their minds that is not congruent with you. This is, of course, the responsibility of the parents. Your ideology has to be infused into the children so they can live on. This is simple human nature and the system goes directly against it. Young leaders, young responsibilities. Number yeah, six. I wouldn't say young leaders. I would simply involve the youth. But the leaders traditionally should be the older folks. And I believe that this hierarchy is, again, natural and healthy for humankind. Number six. Shura, mutual consultation. We yep, need important. to communicate. One of our big problems is we don't communicate with each other. Husband and wife talk to each other. Parents and children talk to each other. Leaders in the community talk to the Jamaat. The masjids, the centers need to have a majlis of Shura. There has to be a place where all of our leaders come together and make a decision. Yes, true. Number seven. Especially in Europe. Empower new Muslims. There are people coming into Islam. There are people interested in Islam and they need to be empowered because this is the new blood. We need a reset. We need a transfusion of blood because with millions of people and our children are crying. Our families in, in, in Palestine are crying. Where are the Muslims? There should be millions of Muslims lined up to go inside of Philistine. So we need a transfusion of blood inside of our bodies. What Number eight. Send the reverts to Palestine. We need to confront the demon of racism and tribalism. Tribalism, yeah. looking at Muslims only with nationality, only with race. Every one of the Muslims in this room, this is your brother, this is your sister, regardless of the language that they speak. When that happens, we become an ummah. We become internationally strong. Yeah, this point didn't get enough attention, in my opinion, because ultimately there's only Islam that speaks about it, right? We can look into the Hadith. Whoever fights under the banner of foolishness 
tribalism, supports tribalism, or gets angry for the sake of tribalism, he will die in a state of ignorance. And this is really what distinguishes Islam from any other ideology. Honestly, if you look at Europe, for example, Europe now has an immigration problem. And the only way that they want to address this, the only way that they can address this, is by returning to nationalism, right? They have to pride themselves yet again in being European and being white. This is the only factor that they can take into consideration, the only factor that they can pride themselves in and tell themselves this is who we are, a flesh ideology ultimately. But life is about cooperation. Therefore, the group, they can truly cooperate no matter what the skin color is, but united under one banner, under one ideology which worships God alone, la ilaha illallah. This is such a powerful movement. This is the only movement that is bound to success. And yet again, only Islam has this. Of course, Christians will say, well, my brother in Christ. But if you look into those churches, they're extremely nationalistic. Which other movement is there? Again, political movements, what? Communism, all of them are nation-based in 99% of the cases. So therefore, this stronghold, this true diversity based upon the faith in God alone is only found within Islam. Operational unity. Yeah, that's not just unity. It's not point. just unite to unite. Operational unity. That means we know the strength and the weakness of each other. Amongst the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, when they would line up, for instance, Khalid ibn al-Walid, the sword of Allah, strong. But when it's time to lead Salat, they look for somebody else. He accepted Islam late. So they look for Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud is a short Yemeni man. He's the master of the Quran. And so he leads the Salat and Khalid, the giant warrior, prays behind Ibn Mas'ud. That's operational unity, you see? But when the enemies of Allah sure, came strate- on the scene, strategic. everybody said, where is Khalid? Put him in the front. Now Khalid will shine. Number 10, and that is that our Islam needs to provide solutions for the real problem of society. We have to take Islam out of these buildings. It has to become part of the discourse. Young people, meetings are going to be happening with the students. Meetings are going to be happening with the youth. Islam has to be part of the discourse of this world. What is Islamic position on the genocide in Palestine? What is the Islamic position on the environmental crisis? What is the Islamic position on inequality of wealth in this world? What is the Islamic position on racism? What is the Islamic position on the oppression of women? What is the Islamic position on the proper use of technology? Yeah, real life How can we use technology? It's important. What is the Islamic position on this? What is our position on power? All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. As I said in the beginning, I was expecting The Great Reset by Klaus Schwab. I thought that we're going to talk about the movement, The Great Reset, and look at it from an Islamic perspective. Thinking of which, honestly, that would be a great video. Maybe I should make a video on that subject. If you would like to see that, let me know in the comment section as well. And then, inshallah, I can make one. This video, on the other hand, used the terminology, the great reset, and applied it to Islam. How can Islam be resetted, or rather, the ummah? How can the ummah be resetted and find back to authentic Islam? The points that he made were pretty much all spot on. As I said, I had small discrepancies. I don't think that young leaders are the best idea. I think we always should look up to our older leaders. But nevertheless, of course, smaller positions, there you could employ the youth. The most important thing is, of course, to have the youth involved, because as he said correctly, they will shape the future. And if you don't involve them, then they will be involved in something else. For example, the youth, the Muslim youth in Germany, from what I saw back in the day, was involved in all kinds of criminal activity, or they were looking for ways out of the criminal activity by rap or any other degenerate practices. None of it was a halal business. 
And that is because we didn't have a strong Muslim body there that was taking care of their youth. Quite the opposite. During that time, we had many people recruiting for ISIS, actually. So this was my upbringing in Germany. This is what I saw. This is what I associated with Islam. Therefore, yet again, it is absolutely crucial to involve the youth. But moreover, it is, of course, extremely important to create healthy families. So divorces, for example, this is something that has to be addressed as well to keep the family strong, a healthy father, a healthy mother, through healthy nutrition and appropriate social dynamics, of course. All right, guys, but I'm going to cut the video off here. There are many things that I would like to mention, especially political subjects that I cannot really talk about here on YouTube. Therefore, do me the favor, check out the links in the description box. We have a Discord server now and a Telegram group as well. You can check out the links with other ways of getting in touch with me as well, for example, via Patreon. And there we can then discuss those subjects that we simply cannot talk about here on this mainstream platform. All right, guys, this is it for today. If you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box, as I already mentioned, to further support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh